Fei Pinying Jiang. Chapter 74 Detained The previous emperor had not conferred Qi Nikan the position of crown princess. The current emperor did not confer her the position of empress. As such, the mood at Count Xiang's estate proved gloomy. When Hanlin deputy Head Zhao paid a visit, Count Xiang wore an expression of exhaustion. Whether or not he had heard the other man's words was anyone's guess. Hanlin deputy Head Zhao said again, Count, if His Majesty truly does what he wants, it will make a huge joke out of our great state of Kong. This humble official cannot persuade your illegitimate son. However, this humble official feels you may not want to use this method to become the imperial father-in-law. You people have already gone to the Crown Prince estate, asked Chi Suxiao. Hanlin deputy head Zhao nodded. Yes. Chi Suxiao glanced at him, eyes bloodshot. A moment later, he yawned. I can't handle this matter. Such an action startled the other party. Then he said, Count. Why has Sir Zhao come, said Chi Suxiao in a cold voice. Indeed. I can earnestly advise His Majesty to not establish my son as the Empress. I can also find Qi Yunruo and tell him if he had honor and shame to not enter the palace. But why should I agree to do this just because you tell me to? How does this benefit me? TT that, then Hanlin Deputy Head Zhao said with rage, even though there's no benefit, we are still the subjects of Great Kong. If we just watch on as the Emperor does such a thing, we will lose all of our face. Hanlin Deputy Head Zhao. You find this shameful but I do not. Send our guest off. Just these few words. Hanlin Academician Zhao stood up in a daze. He was a scholar, and naturally did not have thick enough skin to remain when the host told him to leave. He could only ruthlessly throw his sleeve before withdrawing. He couldn't help but think that Count Ziang truly was like the rumors said caring about nothing and only enjoying himself and playing with women. Halfway on the road, a servant girl suddenly approached him and curtsied. Sir Zhao, mistress asks you to remain. Puzzled, Hanlin deputy head Zhao said, your mistress. This way please, Hanlin deputy head Zhao. Just now, mistress was behind the main hall, and overheard your words. She deeply agreed with what you said. The Count is unwilling to handle this matter but Mistress doesn't want, that person to tarnish the reputation of our estate. Therefore, she asks that you stay and discuss with her. The Palace of Bright Sunday Empress Dowager Zhou's gaze fell upon Prince Jing. This grieving one doesn't really understand what you mean. Prince Jing smiled. It's not that Imperial Mother doesn't understand. It's that Imperial Mother does not trust Sun Official. Empress Dowager Zhou glanced at the palace maid by her side. To which that palace maid nodded and had the entire palace secured, before standing at the door. Inside, there were only Empress Dowager Zhou and Prince Jing present. Imperial Mother, at present, the Emperor has not made a single move but this does not mean he had forgotten his grudge from the time we all attacked him in Martial Hero Hall. Perhaps he is waiting until the national mourning period is over before acting. When all is said and done, this grieving one is the Emperor's birth mother and Prince Yang is his only full-blooded younger brother. What she meant was that should the Emperor retaliate, it wouldn't be her and her son's turns just yet. Once more did Prince Jing smile. If Imperial Mother truly thinks this, then why do you keep instigating fourth brother to make trouble with the Emperor? Imperial Mother, don't forget why Princess Consort Chun died. A trace of misery flashed through Empress Dowager Zhou's face but then she forced herself to calm. Princess Consort Chun had already been seriously ill for many days at that time. Nothing could cure her. It was no one's fault. Imperial Mother, when Imperial Physician Wu still served in the palace, he diagnosed and treated most of the Imperial concubines. He was a highly skilled practitioner, he was the best. On the day he was supposed to see Princess Consort Chun, Su Yuan's men blocked his carriage from approaching. As such, Imperial Physician Wu and his carriage driver could not enter the estate. Afterward, his horse was startled, causing him to fall and hit the ground. 
Although Chi Yutsa carried him inside, it was already too late. Whom does Imperial Mother think the Emperor would hold a grudge against for this? Empress Dowager Zhou said, ice cold, Prince Jing, you mustn't forget. The Emperor and Princess Consort Chun did not have a good relationship. He might not make trouble with his full-blooded brother for a woman not even conferred the title of Crown Princess Consort posthumously. But if His Majesty doesn't even take revenge for his own wife, then he shouldn't be the Emperor. Empress Dowager Zhou long since had a plan. The Emperor had just recently ascended the throne, his foundation was still unstable. If they wanted to do anything, now was the best time. However, she did not trust Prince Jing in the end. Examining him, Empress Dowager Zhou said, Prince Jing, just what is your purpose in trying to incite disharmony countless times between me and my son? Serenely, Prince Jing replied, Recently, Sun Official has read and cultivated one's moral character within my estate, and read Count Zheng overthrows Duan at Yan. Shut up, she said, cold as ice. Are these words something you can say? But there was no trace of fear on Prince Jing's face. Imperial Mother, Miss Zhang doted on her younger son. You should be familiar with how she seized her eldest son's country for him, right? Empress Dowager Zhou sucked in a deep breath. She narrowed her eyes as she looked at him. Why did you say these words? A smile slid its way across Prince Jing's lips. Imperial Mother, it wasn't as if Sun Official hadn't done anything these past few years. There are many people inside and outside the capital who can help me. If you and fourth brother find use in them, Sun Official can hand them all over to you. She sneered. Don't treat others as fools. You want this grieving one and Prince Yang to work hard, only for our work to go toward your benefit? Once this grieving one actually does something, perhaps you would appear as the one benefiting from the fight of others. Prince Jing shook his head and sighed. Sun official only requests that in the future, fourth brother lets me have Jiangnan as my fief. So, Sun official and my princess consort can spend our days in peace and our descendants would have smooth lives. Sun official dares not ask for anything else. However, Empress Dowager Zhou still was not convinced. Prince Jing continued, Right now, the emperor is merely waiting to settle old accounts. Sun official almost killed him in the northwest. No matter who he pardons, he will not forgive me. What's more, Sun Official is not from the legitimate line and does not have a powerful maternal family to protect me. Nowadays, Sun Official only hopes for a road to survival. This time, Empress Dowager Zhou was uncertain how much she should trust his words. Despite this, she pondered over it. It didn't matter why the Emperor did not act on his former political enemies. In the end, it was convenient for Empress Dowager Zhou and Prince Jing, some of the old court ministers, who were aligned with them, still remained in the court and could help them carry out tasks. At present, Empress Dowager Zhou no longer knew why she was still feeling discontent. Whenever she looked at Li Chen, she could never feel the closeness one would feel when looking at one's son. In her heart, Li Chen had long since belonged to the Grand Empress Dowager. He would be filial to the Grand Empress Dowager, would promote the Lan family. She did not want to remain in the palace as a powerless Empress Dowager, with her beloved youngest son unable to return to the capital without the Emperor's decree. She had to watch the Emperor's expression, the Grand Empress Dowager's express, and Chi Yutsa's expression. She would be stuck in her palace until death. Oftentimes, Li Chen would sneak out of the Imperial Palace while no one was looking, clad in civilian attire. Using the light of the moon, he would search for Qi Yunruo. This time, he arrived while Qi Yunruo was in the middle of soaking his feet in hot water, the skin between each toe fair and clear. Qi Yunruo had his head lowered while in thought and hadn't yet noticed that there was an additional person in the room. It wasn't until the light before his eyes was obstructed that he lifted his head. He smiled and said, Your Majesty, you've come. Li Chen took a seat beside him. He then removed his shoes and socks. Then he stretched his legs and submerged his feet into the basin of water. Qi Yunruo was ticklish. 
After making some room, he was careful not to have Li Chen's toenails come across his foot. The two leaned against one another. Has the court still been noisy these past few days? Mm. Chi Yunruo sighed. Did they say anything new today? After a moment of recollection, Li Chen replied, the same old. Actually, that wasn't so. During court that day, someone said that Chi Yunruo's birth mother was a prostitute, that his lineage was filthy, unsuitable for marrying into the imperial family. Li Chen had been displeased, and asked at the scene, if Yu Tse's birth mother was someone else, would he be suitable as the empress? The senior officials dared not respond but the court did not let go of the point about Qi Yunruo's birth mother. Li Chen did not answer him and Qi Yunruo did not ask again. Every day, Li Chen had to return to the palace before morning court resumed. More often than not, when Qi Yunruo roused, the side Li Chen had slept on would already be cold. But this time, when Li Chen woke and changed clothes, Qi Yunruo roused. He tugged at a corner of Li Chen's clothes, not letting him leave. Li Chen sat by the bed, smiling as he looked at him. Will you return today? asked Qi Yunruo. Li Chen bent down. Qi Yunruo closed his eyes, and felt a soft kiss on each of his eyelids. Perhaps not, little Qi. Following that, Chi Yunruo let go of him and smiled. Actually, I understand. You don't need to worry about me, so just go to court. Although they could not be together now, in the future, no one would be able to separate them again. After Li Chen had left, Chi Yunruo went back to sleep. When he woke up, it was almost noon. He dressed, unsure if the emperor finished court yet. Qi Yunruo knew that even without the approval of many of the court officials, the emperor would establish him as the empress in the end. However, he had just ascended the throne. If he had a disagreement with the officials now, it would worsen the relationship between the monarch and his subjects later on. As such, Li Chen wanted to make him empress after he had persuaded more than half of the officials. Once Qi Yunruo was aware that Countess Ziang had arrived, his mood worsened in a flash. Ever since Chi Nikan passed away, Countess Ziang did not visit the estate anymore but now that she had come, he had no choice but to welcome her. Chi Yunruo invited Countess Ziang to Lakeside View House. He was in an even worse mood than when that group of court officials had come. He entered the room and saw Countess Ziang's malicious gaze upon him. Chi Yunruo sat at the side. Truly someone who is to become the Empress, Countess Ziang said. You see your legitimate mother yet don't say even a word. Impatient, he replied bluntly, Mistress, stop beating around the bush. Gloomy and cold, Countess Ziang said, I will not allow you to become Empress. You do not have the qualifications to say this. This is up to the Emperor to decide. Qi Yunruo. For the Emperor to establish an Empress is for him to marry a wife. Don't forget he needs the approval of the wife-to-be's parents first. Let me tell you this, Count Ziang's estate will never agree. Do not forget, said Qi Yunruo, exhausted. Mistress, ever since you sent me to Prince Chun's estate as a dowry escort, I have been moved to their household register, similar to a woman who was married. Once a woman is married, she belongs to her husband. After I left Count Ziang's estate, I no longer need to listen or obey you people. Countess Ziang choked from his words, before grim laughter spilled from her lips. But you killed the emperor's wife. So, what qualifications do you have to replace Kuner? I didn't kill her. But she screamed, shrill to the ears, if it weren't for you, how could Kuner lack the emperor's favor? How could she have gotten poisoned from taking medicine for birthing children? If it weren't for you, how could Kuner have died from depression? The emperor originally treated Princess Consort with deep respect, and did not treat her coldly because she gave birth to two daughters. The gaze of Countess Ziang proved dark and frigid. I have already handed these petitions to Empress Dowager Zhou. Just wait until Her Majesty Empress Dowager Zhou deals with you. Fear filled his heart. Empress Dowager Zhou. 
if she did anything, one would fear the emperor would find it very difficult to oppose her. Pleased with herself, Countess Ziang said, the Empress Dowager will not consent to your coronation. Chi Yunruo, even if the emperor is fond of you, so what? For the rest of your life, your identity will not be fit for the public eye. This is what you owe Kuner. Shifting his ice-cold gaze at her, he said, Mistress, all of this is you and Princess Consort reaping what you sow. You were the ones who sent me to take care of the Emperor's physical needs while Princess Consort was with child. Yet, you do not permit the Emperor to like me? You blame me for everything. Don't tell me you are unaware that this is all your fault. In a flash, Countess Ziang's face turned deathly pale. You always blame other people. Blame my mother for Count Ziang's estate losing its glory and splendor, blame me for Qi Nikan losing the emperor's favor. But if Count Ziang's estate is supposed to remain unshakable, if Count Ziang kept his hands clean, if Princess Consort was truly virtuous, none of this would have happened. Mistress, even if you look for the Empress Dowager, it's useless. No one can stop the emperor from doing what he wants. Countess Ziang's face darkened. She struggled to say, Kuner must be conferred the Empress posthumously. Impossible. Princess Consort is not even the Crown Princess Consort, Chi Yunruo said with indifference. Countess Ziang's breath proved rough and jagged as she stared at him. Chi Yunruo rose to his feet. Took a step back. Instruct the servants to prepare a carriage. I will be entering the palace. Yet he was blocked at the palace gate. Hanlin Deputy Head Zhao was just taking his time in leaving the palace, when he caught sight of him. Her Majesty the Empress Dowager attended court today from behind the curtain, so that the Emperor can reflect on his actions. Once the Emperor changes his mind, he can leave his palace. Chi Yunruo looked at the palace gates. Looked at the crowd of senior court officials departing, who all appeared proud of themselves. There were also some people who seemed anxious, who felt that the Empress Dowager's actions challenged the imperial power. He returned to sit in the carriage and instructed the driver, return to the estate. Inside the Palace of Merciful Peace, the Grand Empress Dowager was in the middle of pruning golden camellias in leisure. Then, her personal attendant, Yunbing, rushed into the room, saying a few words by the Grand Empress Dowager's ear. Oh. Grand Empress Dowager Lan's expression did not change, and she continued to prune her flowers with the tiny pair of scissors. Grand Empress Dowager, what do you think we should? Why the rush? Chunner is truly full of ideas. Before, I found it strange why he didn't do anything after becoming the Emperor. Why he did not put those people in order. So, it was because he was waiting. A wave of relief washed over Yunbing. Should we send a letter to the Crown Prince estate? M.M. It's not necessary. A smile slid its way across the Grand Empress Dowager's face. Just treat it as an old lady like me seeing for the last time how high this child's marks will be. Yunbing nodded. Then the Grand Empress Dowager said, How about this? Later, tell the others to shut the doors of our Palace of Merciful Peace. Say that an old lady like me fell ill. I'm already this age. I shouldn't be mixing up with that business. You're still young, said Yunbing, smiling. How can you call yourself old? Really? Grand Empress Dowager Lan smiled as well. Yes, I also find this weary old body healthy and full of energy. I still have yet to see my grandchildren letting me live out my days in leisure. On the way back to the Crown Prince estate, Chi Yunruo made for Minister Ji's estate. However, he discovered that Ji Huan had been dismissed from office and kept under house arrest. Such was the Empress Dowager's order and no one dared to disobey. The people of Minister Ji's estate were too afraid to invite Chi Yunruo inside. As such, he could only return to the Crown Prince estate. At present, he had no other means of learning the news in the palace, so felt fretful and anxious. He just did not know what to do. During court the next day, Empress Dowager Zhou sobbed, 
putting it bluntly that Li Chen had disregarded the laws and etiquette of their ancestors. That she had ordered him to stay shut up in his palace in order for him to reflect on his actions. If the emperor still refused to realize the errors of his ways, although she could not bear to, she could only have the court ministers select a new emperor. Empress Dowager Zhou repeated again and again that the emperor was her blood-related son. That she loved the emperor the most, but as the wife and daughter-in-law of the Li family, she could not look on helplessly as Li Chen destroyed the imperial family's hundred years of enlightened reign. Once these words were out, shock spread through the entire court. However, many officials agreed with what Empress Dowager Zhou had said, they said she was right without a doubt, said no one wanted to come to this point, but if the emperor truly did not change his mind, they would do what was best for the country. People like Hanlin Deputy Head Zhao, who poured their hearts into reading and studying texts, wanted to do something to help the country and the people. They were unwilling to participate in affairs that involved seizing the throne. But when they recalled that the emperor actually wanted to make a man the empress, they immediately felt the following, this was what happened if the emperor did not care about whether the court officials agreed with his decisions. Although he was the emperor, he was not higher than the sages' teachings, not higher than the laws and etiquette of their ancestors. Of the many officials loyal to Li Chen, a majority suffered the same fate as Ji Huan, dismissed from office and drove home to reflect upon themselves. Moreover, some refuted the Empress Dowager, and were subsequently thrown in prison. Someone presented a petition to the Empress Dowager requesting that Ji Yunruo be granted suicide. However, the Empress Dowager refused. She understood clearly that if Qi Yunruo died, she would not have a reason to keep the Emperor detained, since the issue with establishing him as an Empress wouldn't exist anymore. Then she couldn't force the officials to establish a new Emperor. Therefore, Qi Yunruo must not die. He must stay alive. Now, the deeper Li Chen's feelings were for Qi Yunruo, the less likely he would yield which was advantageous to Empress Dowager Zhou. After waiting in the Crown Prince estate for three days, Qi Yunruo still had no plan. Despite this, he did not want to be resigned to his fate. At present, martial law had been imposed in the capital. Empress Dowager Zhou made public Li Chen's intention of establishing a male empress. Moreover, the capital was full of remarks regarding Li Chen as tyrannical. In just a short few days of work, people mentioned indirectly in the storytellers' booths the erotic romance of Li Chen and Qi Yunruo. The prose was filthy and unpleasant to the ear. They even brought out again the accusation that Li Chen was actually incapable, that he had seized the military contributions of the Northwest. Even under the threat of death, Qi Yunruo wouldn't believe there was not a mastermind inciting this from the background. These events had all been premeditated. But what should he do? What Qi Yunruo worried about the most was Li Chen. If Empress Dowager Zhou truly established a new emperor, it would most likely be Li Su. Would Li Su spare Li Chen? As long as he weaved an excuse, said that Li Chen was ill, was injured. Once he sat on the throne, he had countless means of eliminating him. This matter, along with seeing Prince Jing enter the palace, made Qi Yunruo suddenly think of something. Right now, Prince Jing was pleased with himself. Empress Dowager Zhou trusted him very much. His people in the court jumped to do whatever he wanted. But, what about Prince Jing? The emperor seemed to have said this before, Prince Jing was living his life well-behavedly. Ever since Li Chen had ascended the throne, he stayed in his estate and didn't come out. Qi Yunruo's eyes brightened and he had people prepare a carriage. He was going to Prince Qing's estate. End chapter Fei Pinying Jiang Chapter 75 The End, 1 Whether Li Chen ascended the throne or Empress Dowager Zhou grew pleased from obtaining what she desired, Prince Qing observed the mourning period within his estate in a well-behaved manner. Not long after Princess Consort Qing birthed him a son, she regained her energy and husband and wife caused a racket as they argued every day. It would even erupt into a physical fight every few days. When servants came to announce Qi Yunruo's arrival, 
Prince Ching said at once, I won't meet with him. That person currently stood at the eye of a storm. He himself couldn't afford to offend anyone right now, so he naturally could not meet with Qi Yunruo. But Princess Consort Ching said, You won't see him? But I want to. You. What about me? You coward. You're stupid, yet followed the trend in framing the emperor. Humph. I was stupid in the past. Prince Ching was furious. But now I'm not. As long as I don't provoke anyone, that's fine. If you meet with Qi Yutse now, Li Su won't let us off after he ascends the throne. Ice cold, she replied, Li Su is even more useless than you. If he can become the emperor, then I think Great Kong will be done for. Such words frightened Prince Qing to the point that his face grew ashen. But Princess Consort Qing held quite a lot of power and influence in his prince estate. Once she made the order, the steward brought Qi Yunruo in. When he saw Prince Qing, he asked straight on, Does your highness know the situation in the palace? To which Prince Qing lowered his head. Not a word left his lips. It was uncertain whether his second brother or fourth brother would be the emperor in the future. Thus, he could neither assist Qi Yunruo nor offend him. Princess Consort Qing faced him, grim laughter spilling from her lips. Then she invited Qi Yunruo to sit, before saying, I don't know if he heard you, but I definitely did. Zhang Chuji, shouted Prince Qing. She shot him an impatient glance, then said to Qi Yunruo in a bad mood, This coward is terrified right now. Don't mind him. Nodding, Qi Yunruo could tell that she was the one in charge in this prince estate. In a candid manner, he said, I came here today to ask your highnesses for help. Anxiously, Prince Qing looked at his princess consort, afraid she would agree. With her gaze upon Qi Yunruo, Princess Consort Qing frowned. Adjutant Qi, to be honest, I don't know if I should help you. You should be able to see it clearly now. Prince Jing is helping Empress Dowager Zhou. Prince Yang is usurping the throne. Or perhaps you can say, Prince Jing wants to usurp the throne. We know this too, said Princess Consort Qing, a smile on her lips. The way Princess Consort sees it, do you believe they will succeed? Before she could respond, Prince Qing muttered, Right now, Empress Dowager Zhou has detained second imperial brother. But I don't believe His Majesty would have nothing prepared, said Qi Yunruo. He would not so quietly let Empress Dowager detain him, otherwise. What do you know? asked Prince Qing, tone suspicious. Qi Yunruo shook his head. It's not that I know something. I merely trust him. Prince Qing's expression darkened, it was clear he was unwilling to get involved in this unsavory enterprise. Princess Consort Qing's expression turned cold and severe. She grew up in a family of generals. Although the people of her parents' generation no longer led their own army, the Zhang family had not lost their military habits and character. Princess Consort Qing had an unyielding temperament. Regarding small matters, she was unwilling to even be wronged by her husband. Regarding important matters, she and the family behind her were unwilling to serve an emperor who had seized his throne. However, this situation was too critical. Before she could be entirely sure of success, she could not agree to Qi Yunruo's request. Princess Consort, how well do you understand His Majesty? How well do you understand Prince Jing and Prince Yang? Back then, these two princes kept giving His Majesty trouble but the previous emperor still chose His Majesty as his successor. His Majesty was able to win battles against the Qiang in the northwest, and he will turn around the current situation. No matter what, I cannot believe that these people who've lost to His Majesty before would defeat him. But, said Princess Consort Qing with hesitation. What if you've guessed wrong? Looking at Prince Qing, Qi Yunruo said, I know what you, Prince Qing, are worried about. However, your honored self must think of this carefully. If Prince Qing truly supports Prince Yang's ascension with all his might, that's still fine. Compared to him, Prince Yang is very cowardly. 
he is indeed not someone who would act on his own brothers. But if Prince Jing ascends the throne in the end, this person is vicious and merciless. He would not let off anyone in the end. Yet if you help me now, I can protect you and Princess Consort, keep you safe and sound. Prince Ching and Princess Consort Ching shared a look. After a moment of thought, she said, What do you want us to do? I ask your highness to tell the Yuan family members and other officials who endorse you to oppose the selection of a new emperor. A smile graced Qi Yunruo's lips. If it's too difficult of a situation for them, then tell them to choose you if possible. As long as they don't vote for Prince Yang. I also request for your highness to dispatch some people to the marketplace, and have them suppress the slanderous words against the emperor. Princess Consort Ching nodded. Prince Ching, who had stayed silent until now, suddenly said, I don't want to tell anyone to recommend me. How about I ask my maternal uncles and the others to push for Prince Jing? The eyes of Qi Yunruo shone. At present, Empress Dowager Zhou was preparing to have the officials choose a new emperor. The majority would recommend Prince Yang. But if another faction started to push for Prince Jing, then perhaps not long from then, this alliance would crumble. Qi Yunruo rose to his feet. Held his arms straight up front and one hand cupped in the other then bowed deeply. Thank you very much. Head Lord, Prince Ching said, Adjutant Chi, I've long since not wanted to participate in this dispute. I ask that in the future, His Majesty will allocate a great piece of land for me and my wife. To which Chi Yunruo nodded and took his leave. Within Zikin Palace, Li Chen sat on a low couch. He poured a cup of green tea for himself. It was quiet and peaceful with not another person around. After Empress Dowager Zhou had found an opportunity to isolate Li Chen from other people, she also transferred all of the servants attending him to other places. She had managed the imperial palace for decades, her foundation more stable than that of Li Chen. Currently, he was on his fifth day of detainment by Empress Dowager Zhou's command. In five days' time, those hiding in the open and in secret should have already cropped up. Once Li Chen had finished a pot of tea, he made for the side of the window at a leisurely pace. He picked up a book he had not finished yesterday, and continued reading it. When the court started to recommend a new emperor, the high-ranking officials separated into two factions, one that pushed for Prince Yang and one that pushed for Prince Jing. In the end, there was also a faction that opposed the selection of a new emperor. After court concluded, Empress Dowager Zhou looked at Prince Jing, gaze ice cold. So, it turns out this was your plan. I've come out as the villain while you obtain the hearts of the people, aiming for the throne using your identity as the previous emperor's eldest son. To which Prince Jing replied, son official has not foreseen such an event as well. Imperial mother, don't tell me you did not notice it. The majority of the officials who recommended me were members of the Yuan family and their allies. Prince Qing is trying to destroy this election of a new emperor in the shadows, purposely provoking us. All throughout this situation, Prince Yang heeded his mother's command, not appearing in the court. His gaze proved slightly dark as he looked at Prince Jing. If eldest imperial brother doesn't accept me, then there was no need to say such words at the start. I've already explained everything. Do Imperial Mother and Fourth Brother still not trust me? Empress Dowager Zhou had never trusted Prince Jing. What she had wanted was an opportunity to kick him aside. A moment later, she said, In three days, this grieving one will declare during court that Su'er shall ascend the throne. From then on, you no longer need to attend court. In a flash, Li Su's gaze brightened. In a vigilant manner, he cast a glance at Prince Jing, the latter's expression unchanging as he said with indifference, son official will do as imperial mother says. Once Prince Jing was outside the palace, his gaze revealed disdain. Idiots! After Empress Dowager Zhou established the new emperor the day after tomorrow, his people would enter the imperial palace using the excuse of saving the current emperor. Weapons did not have eyes. If Li Chen was killed by accident in the process, there was nothing to be done. 
at that time that mother and son pair did not have to survive. And the Prince Ching who tried to entrap him today during morning court. He had originally intended to let him live. In these past years, Prince Jing had purchased many rural manors in the suburbs. He had hidden many men in said rural manors. Previously, he had used a portion of the money he embezzled from the Ministry of Revenue to raise his own private army. Another portion went to his wife's family, so that they could invest in businesses in Jiangnan. Once that money gave rise to more money, the funds would return to the capital in an unending stream. After Princess Consort Ching's few days of labor, the rumors in the capital had indeed been suppressed. Qi Yunruo discovered the next day that Empress Dowager Zhou would push for a new emperor during court. He paced back and forth, restless. Although he had confidence in the emperor, he could not suppress all the worries in his heart. Every day he could not see Li Chen was a day he could not feel at ease. Following Li Chen's rise to the throne, most of the guards in the Crown Prince estate received posts as officials. For example, Chu Qing had been assigned to the Western Mountain Camp, and the leader of the guards at the Crown Prince estate was now Fang Gur. For the past few days, he accompanied Qi Yunruo all over the estate. After Fang Gur had returned from discreetly getting information outside, he said, I cannot leave the capital right now and cannot contact Chu Qing. Most of the other trusted aides and families loyal to the emperor are being monitored. Qi Yunruo nodded. He couldn't help but think, His Majesty must have prepared something outside the palace. But where would those people be scattered? Would I be able to find them? His Majesty. At that moment, Qi Yunruo's eyes brightened. Accompany me to Xia House. Fang Gur was startled, but in the end he nodded. Understood. During the national mourning period, the common people must not marry for one year. The educated middle class must not host banquets and events. However, regular brothels and male brothels alike could still be open to the public. Qi Yunruo changed into a set of inconspicuous clothes and entered Xia House looking for Rong Sunyang. Rong Sunyang did not ask one question, before bringing him to a hidden room and waited for him to speak. Sunyang. I know that you are well informed. I just want to know whether the Xia House that you represent and the other powers I'm unaware of are in favor of His Majesty. After a moment of silence, she said, since before, the previous emperor had hidden countless spies inside and outside the palace. Not long after the previous emperor passed, these powers shifted their loyalty and devotion to the current emperor. Currently, the emperor is placed under house arrest said Qi Yunruo. Sun Yang, do you have any way of letting me meet with him? A light sigh. The current situation is dangerous. You should not involve yourself. Empress Dowager Zhou will choose a new emperor tomorrow. I think something might happen. Sun Yang, just tell me. Will the emperor be able to handle this? We at Xia House are only in charge of finding out news from the people of note in the capital she said with a complicated gaze. Regarding the events in the palace, we are not at all knowledgeable. So, I can't tell you anything. For a good while, Qi Yunruo kept quiet. As he prepared to leave, Rong Sunyang suddenly called out to him. Startled, he asked, is there something else you want to tell me? I heard that the emperor wanted to make you his empress. Qi Yunruo nodded. She seemed not to know what to say as she hesitated. You need to think about this carefully. This matter has blown up until now that even if His Majesty succeeds, how do you think people would see you? They'd say you brought calamity to the country and its people. Why should I care how other people view me? I'm willing to be the Empress, and His Majesty is also willing. No one can influence our decision. Rong Sunyang forced a smile. In Qi Yunruo's opinion, it was perhaps she had recalled the previous emperor. Rong Sunyang had never married, maintaining Xia House for the previous emperor for many years. However, whether it was her or Shui Ling Long, the new emperor would never allow them to be known in public for their contributions to the monarch. I'll leave first. Take care of yourself. Nodding, 
Rong Sunyang watched as he left. As Chi Yunruo stood before the doors of the Crown Prince estate, he heard from the outside an unceasing torrent of cacophony. Prince Jing's men had surrounded the entire capital. Prince Jing himself had led troops into the Imperial Palace today. His reason, to deter the other powers in the capital from taking advantage of the chaos to cause trouble. All the prince estates and duke estates were surrounded. Chi Yunruo stared up at the sky where black clouds were aplenty. When the rain would fall stood as a mystery. After Prince Qing recommended Prince Jing, Empress Dowager Zhou grew more on guard against him. Thus, once Prince Jing had sent out his troops, she contacted many of her people. Zhou Linjian was to guard the gates to the Imperial Palace and kill Prince Jing on sight. Prince Jing's excuse for sending out his troops was to quell the rebels. Whereas, Zhou Linjian was to arrest Prince Jing, this traitor. Not long after the two groups of men started to fight, the Grand Empress Dowager, who had stayed shut up in the Palace of Merciful Peace, instructed her people to slowly open the doors to her residence as she led her palace mates and court eunuchs to Zhishan Palace. The servants of the palace fled in disarray everywhere. With a calm expression, the Grand Empress Dowager was not affected at all by the current situation. In an unhurried pace, she finally reached Zhishan Palace, and two Imperial Guards blocked the way inside. The Grand Empress Dowager said with indifference, Scram. The two Imperial Guards shared a look, then withdrew without a word. She supported herself with the hand of Yunbing as she entered the hall. Li Chen stood with a smile. Grandmother, why have you come? The racket outside is making me uncomfortable. Li Chen supported her to a seat. Grand Empress Dowager Lan smiled. Now that I think about it, I truly admire your little Qi. He actually went looking for Prince Qing's help. Li Chen was all smiles. Grand Empress Dowager Lan asked, When are you going to make a move? At present, all the civil and military officials were surrounded in the Hall of Supreme Harmony, their expressions the picture of anxiety. Whether it was the Zhou clan's people or the Yuan clan's people, they were scared witless. At this moment, Empress Dowager Zhou sat behind the curtain, hands trembling to no end. If they won, everything would lie in their hands. But if they failed? She had already declared Li Su as the new emperor. However, Li Su only stood next to the imperial throne, not having the courage to sit on it. Report, the rebel Prince Jing has already broken into the palace. Your Majesty the Empress Dowager. Prince Jing's men are approaching the Hall of Supreme Harmony. Some of the officials didn't seem too concerned. No matter who became the emperor, he could not behead them all. However, there were some officials whose faces had already turned yellow. They were loyal to Empress Dowager Zhou. If Prince Jing grasped victory. In a stern voice, Empress Dowager Zhou said, Where are the Kiania guards? The Danii guards? Prince Jing is a rebel. Everyone can kill him. Whoever does will be rewarded 50 kilograms of silver and conferred the position of a third rank count. Prince Yang looked at his own mother, voice trembling as he said, Imperial mother, would eldest imperial brother, allow us to. Shut up, she said, shooting an ice cold look at him. She did not understand why her son was so useless and scared into this kind of state right now. If Prince Jing manages to breach our defenses, you and this grieving one would both be killed. Prince Jing had hidden his true power for many years, his strength could not be underestimated. Just recently, she gave the order to shut the city gates. But even if the order was received now, the troops at the Western Mountain Camp would still take at least many hours to arrive. What's more, those people were loyal to the Emperor. Empress Dowager Zhou was expressionless. Yet, as time passed, a trace of despair rose in her heart. What's to be done, she muttered. All of a sudden, she thought the following, since Prince Jing was using the excuse of killing rebels to break into the palace, if she made this reason no longer applicable, it might pressure his subordinates to stop. Empress Dowager Zhou ordered, bring his majesty here. Eyes widening, Prince Yang said, Imperial Mother. Fool. 
she said, looking at him, if Prince Jing still doesn't cease his actions after the Emperor's appearance, we can use the Emperor to give us more time. If Prince Jing hesitates, we can formulate another plan. Yes, Sun understands. The atmosphere here was too oppressive, so Li Su did not assign anyone to the task. Rather, he ran out of the hall to look for Li Chen. Despite this, by the time he reached Xixian Palace, he discovered that there was already not a soul in sight. When the Grand Empress Dowager returned to the Palace of Merciful Peace, Li Chen left the palace. However, an elderly lady like herself did not need to follow. Because whether it was Empress Dowager Zhou or Prince Jing, they did not have the courage to make a move on her. She only needed to wait for the conclusion here. Li Chen had long since held the Western Mountain Camp in the palm of his hand. While Empress Dowager Zhou thought the troops from there could not enter the capital, and while the capital was under her control, over 10,000 troops had already been waiting in a camp outside the capital for many days. The news she had received wasn't accurate. Zheng Yang Gate opened. The soldiers led by Chu Qing saluted Li Chen. Li Chen wore his dragon robe as he said with indifference, Everyone, today you will follow us in killing traitors and establish the greatest contribution of your life. Long live the Emperor! The autumn rain caused one to shiver as the cold air seeped into the bone. After Qi Yunruo heard the shouts that resembled the sound of thunder, he no longer felt as anxious. This kind of soldiers was not comparable to the ragtag army led by Prince Jing. They had gone through a baptism on the battlefield, had experienced trials of life and death. On that day, Prince Jing was executed. Empress Dowager Zhou and Prince Yang were captured in the palace, and her title was seized. She was to remain imprisoned in the Palace of Bright Sun for the rest of her life, whereas Li Su was stripped of his title of first-ranked prince and was detained in the suburbs. One month later, Li Chen tidied up the court and set Jianzhou Prefecture as Prince Qing's fief. Then he mentioned taking an empress again. This time, there were no dissidents in the court. Li Chen smiled. On the sixth day of the second month next year, we will hold the Empress coronation. How does beloved minister feel? The Emperor had even chosen a date. The Minister of Rights could only smile. This official will not disappoint. The ceremony will move forward without issue. End chapter